Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes, Trims and Cold Steel. Last time, we finished up day one of Arayhard's request. And well, well, technically we're finished, but now we're going to end today's day one and go straight into day two. So, let's go. But first, a long cutscene. Return to the hotel. Father? Oh, really? Duke Alborea. Wow. Doesn't even time have time for his own son. Oh, let's get something to eat. Ah, <sighs> the breeze here feels wonderful. <laughs> the food was delicious, too. The breeze in here feels... I don't know. It's not me breezy in here because my windows are closed and it's hot as hell. <laughs> Agreed. I can see why this restaurant is popular with the nobles. Do you dine here often, Yusis? I do. The chef has been good to me since I was a child. I was practically raised on this food. How typical. Even in your dining habits, you nobles subsist on unnecessary luxury. Though I can't deny the quality of the food. It wasn't just tasty, but warm, too. Yes. For a high-class restaurant, the chef seems to have used a lot of very healthy ingredients. Perhaps he's doing his part to ensure Yusis stays in good health. I wouldn't doubt it. Hmm. I wonder what Group B is doing right now. <laughs> we had this exact same conversation in our group last month, too. I'm sure they're hard at work over in St. Ark. Probably nothing to worry about. Concern they actually do work well together. It was Keldic for you last month, right? So you were thinking of us on the first night? Yeah. After dinner, we were wondering how Group B was getting on. Dare I ask? Uh, well... Pretty poorly. I'll just say it blunt and I'll just say it right now. Nowhere near as peacefully as now. This is a big improvement. I... kind of figured that much. We are doing much better this time. That much is true. Huh? And I'm sure our reports will reflect that. It is an improvement, though I'm not convinced it's good enough. It... it's not? I'm certain Group B gave their absolute best in all of their tasks today. But can we honestly say the same? That we could have done no better? Yusis has a point concerning what happened. And I'm referring not just to the monster encounter, but to the handling of our other tasks as well. Hmm... We'll just have to try and make up for it in the day we have left. Besides, we have the chance to catch sight of a far bigger problem. Yes, that's true. First we find out taxes are rising throughout the province. Then we find out the military is being expanded on a grand scale. Don't even try to tell me the two aren't related. I have no intention of denying it. But you're only looking at one side of the coin. Exactly how many Oxen tanks do you think the Imperial Army has under their control? Well... A hundred or two, I'd guess. Precisely. The Imperial Army's military capabilities are enormous. This nation has one of the most powerful armed forces on the continent, and roughly 70% of it is under the Chancellor's control. Tell me, how is the Noble Alliance supposed to counter that? You're supposed to be working together, come on, for God's sake, or for idiot's sake. 
So you're suggesting that's why the Provincial Army needs to bolster its forces? Considering both sides are comprised of Erebonians, it all seems so wasteful. Ah, oh, the travails of youth! How noble and beautiful they are! I know that voice. Yeah. It's you! Biggish. Baron Blue Blanc, I believe? Ha ha! It's such an honor that you would remember a mere Baron. I see you completed a hard day's work already. How splendid! Thank you, I guess? Yes, nearly. What about you? Alas, I have yet to be blessed with the fateful encounter I seek. The search for beauty is filled with perils and obstacles, yet that is precisely what makes it all so beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. <laughs> I most certainly will. Though it truly is a pity that the clear air of this verdant city should be tinged, if but faintly, with the scent of steel. <laughs> I'd heard that Duke Alborea was a man of many interests, but I was unaware he counted playing with fire among them. Really? I don't condemn him for it, though, for only by playing with fire can one create fireworks. Would you not agree, my friends? I don't like your implications. And I think this whole line of conversation is a little inappropriate. Oh, please do pardon me, young lady. I meant no harm, I assure you. I wish you well on your remaining day here. May you reveal to me the beauty I seek by its end. Be it the lovely luster of success or the sad splendor of failure. Man, he sure likes to talk. Who does he think he is? This is why I can't stand nobles. <laughs> I thought you might say that. If it makes you feel better, though, I have my doubts as to whether that man truly is a noble to begin with. What? His behavior seems so exaggerated. Almost as if he's trying to act like the quintessential noble. Like he's fulfilling the stereotype. Sounds about right. Because I might know who he really is. Yeah. Something about him feels off to me, too. But what's even stranger is that he knew we only have one day left here. It, you're right. We told him of our field study, but never once did we divulge how long we intended to remain here. Wow, he has a point. Between him and that silver object, we've been crossing paths with a lot of strange people today. Well, tomorrow's the end of our stint here. We can't let ourselves get distracted. We still have a lot to do. That's right. We have to do our group proud. <laughs> exactly. We should return to the hotel and begin work on our reports then. It's a pretty night at least. Pretty quiet, too. <sighs> Can't get to sleep. I could ask you the same. You aren't going to tell me the bed's too hard for you, are you? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. I've never slept in a bed this high class in my life. Not even back at home. And yet you're the son of Baron Schwarzer. You've not lived the life one might expect of a boy from a noble family. Yeah, that's just how my dad is. A lord should live like his people, not above them. That's how he always put it. That's an awesome way of putting it. I see. It sounds as though you have a good family. Yeah, I'm very thankful for my upbringing. Aren't you going to ask? I assumed you'd be curious about that brief exchange with my father earlier.
Yeah. I wasn't really sure you'd want me to bring that up. You obviously get along really well with your brother, but I didn't get that same sense with the Duke. Has he always been like that? As far back as I can remember. I suppose he just has little respect for a son born to a commoner. What? Really? My brother and I have different mothers. He was born of my father's legal wife, a noble who still lives to this day. My own mother, however, was a commoner, and she passed away eight years ago. In other words, I am his bastard son. I had no idea. So, was that chef we met earlier? He's my uncle, on my mother's side. Perhaps that's why he's always been so good to me. I think I mentioned this, um, the, the previous part, that he was, um... Actually, maybe it was in the failed recording. I don't remember. <laughs> or perhaps he's simply compelled to treat me as I deserve to be treated, being the son of the Duke. No, that can't be. I don't blame you for being a little cynical, but there's no need to be quite so hard on yourself. I suppose you're right. I'm... I'm sure you have your differences, but you do get along with your brother, right? You could say that. He's treated me well ever since I was taken in eight years ago. He was the one who taught me my swordsmanship, and who... <laughs> I knew it. Didn't mean skip it. Pardon? There's just something honest, I guess you could say, about the way you fight. It shows that whoever taught you was someone you really trusted. When we first met him this afternoon, I had a hunch he might have been the one. What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing at all. You just keep reminding me how unlike a noble you truly are. <laughs> I get that a lot. Is your injury from this afternoon on the mend? It's fine, honestly. There's no pain, and the wound's closed up like it was never there. I'll have to be sure to thank Emma's grandmother for her help someday. That's good to hear. Still, from where I stand, you are something of a danger to yourself. I... am? Really? On the day of the entrance ceremony, when the trapdoor opened beneath us, you acted instantly to protect Elisa. It wasn't even a moment's hesitation. Oh, he noticed. Ah. In most cases, one would reflexively act to protect himself. It's part of man's natural survival instinct. Yet you put another before yourself, not even pausing to question the validity of that decision. And you did exactly the same thing with us today. I'm sure most people would see that as an act of selflessness and sing your praises for it. But to me, it comes across as abnormal, perhaps even twisted. Well, I guess that's one way to put it. Rain's been like this all his life, I mean... The way he's been raised and all, not, well, it's not the fact that he was raised like that, it's just the fact that it's core who he is. Because he was adopted and all that, his, um, abnormality is the reason he took up the eight leaves of school. <laughs> I, uh, don't know how to respond to that. I wasn't expecting you to see through me quite so clearly. Well. I owed you as much for having seen through me first. Still, the point stands. You need to be more cognizant of the effects your actions have on those around you. If not for your health and for your... reputation. That selflessness of yours can just as easily be perceived as arrogance, after all. I know it can. And you're not the first person to tell me that. What's the point in saving others if you can't spare even a moment to save yourself? That's a good point. If you can't save yourself, how the hell can you save others? People always say that you always have to, it's always yourself first. No matter how, no matter what the situation, always think it's the, always takes time for yourself. That's what my old master always used to say to me. Was it now? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we both have some things we need to work through. Yeah. But for now, we need to get a good night's sleep. 
If we stay up too late tonight, we're going to be dead to the world tomorrow. And that wouldn't be fair to the others. <laughs> I agree. It wouldn't be fair. To the girls, at least. I'd hate to be so tired as to limit my potential. Here, here. Good night, Yusis. Pleasant dreams. And Machius was listening the entire time. Keep up the good work. I shall.